Well, welcome back, everyone. PCH, Phoenix Children's Hospital, is leading the way when it comes to early diagnosing and early intervention in autism. Hard work being done by doctors there to ensure that kids across the state are getting in front of the right doctors at the right time. Right, because it would be such a difficult disease to, to treat, mm -hmm. right? And we're mm -hmm. still looking for cures all the time. And you went out there and looked at what they're doing. Yes, take a look. Dr. Robin Blitz, director and sectional chief of developmental pediatrics, is leading the way in the fight against autism and developmental disabilities, thanks to a grant-supported program called Early Access to Care, AZ. When we looked at numbers, we had, from January to August 2015, we had seen about 2,400 patients with various diagnoses, autism, developmental delay, fragile X syndrome, Down syndrome, et cetera, ADHD. Um, but there were also over 2,000 patients in that same period of time who had been referred and never scheduled. The need was there, yet there weren't enough practitioners across the state to meet those needs. In Phoenix, there's us at Phoenix Children's Hospital, and there's a private practice in town. But we're the only practice that takes Medicaid, our access program. Um, which most children with developmental disabilities are on. She says 51% of children in Arizona are on access. Their goal was to figure out how to expand services to those children with developmental disabilities in Arizona, specifically autism, because the prevalence is one in 66 kids. Over the years, the expertise in diagnosing autism has gotten better as the medical community has become more aware. Part of it is we weren't identifying children with autism uh, very frequently and we also now have autism spectrum disorder since DSM-5 was published in 2013 and that expanded the diagnosis to include classic autism all the way to Asperger disorder and part of the reason for doing that is that in the past children with Asperger disorder were not necessarily always being served um, in our schools in our state systems by insurance and we know that they need services just as much as as the child with classic autism. The other piece, I think, is we now understand that there's genetic predisposition uh, to that is the cause of many children with autism. In fact, on our chromosomal microarrays, we identify up to 20%, and some of them actually claim up to 30% of children with autism have a chromosomal abnormality that we can now identify. She credits medical technology with that and believes that in another 10 or 15 years, they will be able to understand all the genetic predispositions. As for parents, milestone markers are good points of reference to be aware of. Babies should be making eye contact with mom and dad and other primary caregivers, right? Babies should be able to uh, follow mom and dad's gaze when they look up to see an airplane and when they point to the moon. Babies should be able to point themselves to share information with their moms and dads between 11 and 14 months of age. Babies should be turning to their voice and infants should understand no. And infants should be saying mama, dada, and one word by one year of age. On top of parent advocacy, the goal with the early access to care program is to train more primary care providers to screen for autism as well as equip school personnel to look for identifiers and early diagnosis is key. What we know is that if these children with autism get early intervention such as intensive two years individualized autism specific intervention that child uh, IQ raises by 25 points as compared to children who might get two years of special education in preschool, has increased ability to be with their typical peers by third grade, has increased adaptive functioning so they can communicate better, have better self-care skills. And our goal is by identifying early and intervening early, those, we want those children being able to graduate high school and go to college if they want and have jobs. And there are many people with autism who can do that, but without the appropriate and early intervention, that possibility is much less. So, I mean, she says it right there, early intervention, uh, er, well, early diagnosis leads to early intervention, and that is key for kids who are diagnosed to assimilate and to thrive and to go on and live, you know, wonderful lives, go to college, have 25 great job. points, IQ. The yeah, that's I mean, huge. That's, that's a, that's big, a big, difference. big difference. So the All key from is... early intervention and getting them in front of the right doctors, the right protocol, the right programs, 
it's it's so important and PCH is hoping to make that available for more and more families that are just waiting to see the right doctors to get the right diagnosis. So All by this grant supported program that hopefully over the years more money comes in and, and will help them be able to do that. They're doing great work there they are. and she's leading the way. She's a great doctor and the whole staff at PCH. Obviously. And she dropped a few hints, you know, they should be they should turn to your voice. They should say yeah. mama, dada and one, one other word, word by, by year and, and it's it's good so. it's good points of reference at least right. to get the conversation going with your primary care physician if that is in fact a problem right now. You know, it might not be anything, but you, you, you got to bring it. You, you're your advocate for your kid. You're the greatest advocate for your child. Good piece. That was interesting. Uh, Fan Fest Day for d -backs fans. Liz has a preview when we come back. Smart Parents Healthy Kids is brought to you by Phoenix Children's Hospital.